People often have a misunderstanding on what a blue water cruising catamaran is. They oftentimes think it's gotta be some sleek, sexy, performance French built catamaran. Well, today I'm gonna to show you guys that's not the case. To me, an experienced sailor, a blue water cruising catamaran is something that I can safely and comfortably sail across oceans. Today we're on board Fart and Roses, a 2022 Lagoon 46 that I think embodies what a blue water production cruising catamaran is to me. Not only are you all gonna have the benefit of me showing you around the exterior places, but this is gonna be our newest broker, Peter Obetz's debut on camera, whereas a full-time liveaboard sailor on his own catamaran, he's gonna take us through the interior and shows us what works and what doesn't work based on his years of liveaboard experience. We have an exciting day of sailing out here in the Anguilla Channel off of St. Martin, so be sure to watch this video through the end. My name is Wiley Sharp, and on behalf of the entire team at Catamaran Central, welcome aboard. We're gonna to begin today's tour here on the hydraulic swim platform, which is one of the most unique options. It's not often found on a boat in this size range. It's a great place for tender storage. It's also a fantastic place to set up a beach club while hanging out at anchor. A couple of other things we're gonna point out while we're back here is also the life raft extrusion, making it a very, very easy life raft to deploy in an emergency situation, as well as a custom solar array over my head. From here, let's go ahead and make our way up to the cockpit and check out some of the features up there. Before we do that, I just want to point out the swim ladder here on the port transom, as well as the hot, cold shower. Here in the port side, we have the first of two upgraded Yanmar diesels paired to folding props. We also have a Nardi hookah system built into the boat, as well as a 100 liter an hour and a roughly 25 gallon an hour desalinator water maker. So over here on the starboard side, we have the second upgraded Yanmar diesel, as well as one of the most important upgrades found on this boat, the Victron Quattro. Bar none, the Victron Quattro is the best inverter charger system you can get anywhere in the world. The owners of this boat though, took the electrical system one step further by not only having a 110 factory installed line, but they also did an aftermarket 220 volt, making this truly a world cruising catamaran. So in the cockpit, there is a lot going on here. And as you guys know, I've always been a huge fan of what Lagoon does with their cockpits. I mean, I thought the Lagoon 450 was one of the best cockpits ever in any mid 40 foot range catamaran. Where you come on the 46 and it's just an evolution of that design and even better than what I already thought was a perfect cockpit. So over here on the port side is a good example of that evolution. We've got a nice L-shaped settee with a table that leafs out and opens that can more than comfortably sit eight people for dinner. But if you only have a handful of people or four people or in the case of this boat, a couple on board, you can actually slide this bench seat up and create a much more intimate seating space while still having really good access to the flybridge. A very common conversation I have while helping buyers find the perfect catamaran is finding that late model boat that is in light new condition where somebody has already dealt with all the pains of commissioning the boat, the pains of outfitting the boat, but as a buyer, you still wanna buy something that is very new feeling. When we opened up this table earlier, you could still smell the teak oil permeating the air from the original factory teak job. And while we try to show you every detail with this boat or with all the boats we film, there's certain things that you just can't show through camera. And just the overall feeling of newness and cleanliness on board this boat is something that I hope you guys will be able to see through this video. A goal for any yacht designer is to maximize storage. And a good example of how they did that on board the Lagoon 46 was by incorporating storage not only under the moving section of the bench here, but by moving the propane locker over here port side, which would normally be dead space on a boat like this. We've also got top loading storage here. And underneath this oversized overstuffed day bed, we have probably the largest cockpit locker of any boat in the mid 40 foot size range. Adjacent to the trash and cleaning bin storage, we have the wet bar, which has a factory installed refrigerator, as well as an ice maker and a single basin sink. Before we head into the salon, we're gonna pop up top and take a quick look at the flybridge. Lagoon essentially developed a flybridge on a mid-sized catamaran and the evolution of what a flybridge means to them is seen here in this book. 
not only do we have the helm seat like we've seen on the Lagoon 440s and the Lagoon 450s, but now we've got a proper day bed underneath the factory installed hardtop that's fully enclosed with an Isinglass enclosure. And it's worth mentioning that there's also a full enclosure for the cockpit down below. But probably the most important thing going on is just how easy this boat is to sail single handed. She has a self tacking jib, a square top main, and the line handling is far easier than her predecessor, the Lagoon 450, with all the main sail control lines coming just to the port side of the helm. The predecessor, you had to run port to starboard while tacking, but because of the self tacking jib, the helmsman does not even need to leave the helm. So to the port side of the helm, we have two banks of spin lock jammers, which essentially controls all of the major sail control lines on board the boat. Just inboard of that, we get to the actual helm, and you'll notice that there is a full set of B&G electronics, which not only includes AIS and radar, but also forward-facing sonar and autopilot. Continuing starboard from there, you'll see we've got a couple of rocker switches for the bilge pumps. We also have a handset for the B&G VHF, Yanmar control panels, a quick windless anchor controller with integrated chain counter, and an additional fusion stereo control center. And as you can see, it's very easy to keep all of the lines neat and tidy in this cockpit with more than ample line storage. This is the kind of space where I picture myself on an overnight passage where I'm off watch Laura's at the helm and I'm sitting up here taking a nap. So if something goes sideways, I'm there to help, but I'm also able to get a good night's rest and stay fresh while on an overnight passage. So one last thing before we make our way up to the foredeck is I wanted to point out that there's foam decking not only here on the flybridge, but also in the cockpit, which is a really nice change from the flexi teak or real teak that we usually find. And it just feels much nicer underfoot, especially when you're barefoot on board all day long. From here, we're gonna go ahead and make our way up to the foredeck. Now, normally we start up on the bowsprit and work our way in. Although today I wanna to start here in the forward cockpit, which for me is probably my favorite part of this four deck area. On the port side lazarette, we have the 13 and a half kilowatt Onan generator. Center line, we've got a little bit of storage, but it's primarily taken up by the additional water tanks where they double the capacity from the factory standard. And then over here on the starboard side, we have a chain locker storage, as well as a windless remote. So if you need to drop anchor from here on the four deck. So this boat's equipped with two cavernous four peaks, which is more than enough storage, not only for the Code Zero when it's not up on the bow sprit, but everything else they've needed while sailing this boat all throughout the Mediterranean, eventually making their way here to the Caribbean on board. And probably the most important thing happening up here on the foredeck is actually the sail plan. This boat has got a massive Mylar Code Zero, a self-tacking jib, a powerful double spread rig, and square top mainsail, everything leads right back to the helm. From here, we're gonna go ahead and make our way back to the cockpit and into the salon, where I'm gonna go ahead and pass over the mic to Peter Obetz, who has a full-time live aboard on his catamaran, can show you all of the features on why Fart and Roses is the perfect boat for a cruising couple. Thanks, Wiley. I'm Peter Obetz, one of the brokers with Catamaran Central. Let me show you a few of my favorite features of this beautiful 2022 Lagoon 46. So the owners of this particular boat recognized that the large table that comes with the boat and is still on the boat is almost too big for daily use. So they have added a custom, smaller, more intimate table that they can use for daily use. It has different size legs, so this table can be lowered down to have a low cocktail table, the other nice feature is that the large table has shorter legs that can be dropped down with a filler cushion and provide two additional berths for this boat. One of the things that I think about because I live on a 40 foot sail cat with my wife and I have now for 13 years is what does this space feel like to live in? And they've done this right. You have beautiful contrasting colors between the darker wood and the lighter countertops. Notice that all of them are nicely fiddled to hold items, bottles, glasses, cookware, etc., from falling off. Just a nice touch. The other nice thing about this particular model is that whoever is in the kitchen, you have a way to pass through drinks, food, etc., and still be a part of everyone who is on your boat with you. One of the things that's always a challenge on a cruising sailboat is how do you keep enough food cold? Lagoon has addressed that. There are two large refrigerators, one of them a drawer, 
one of them this very nice opening door and a freezer, all within steps of this galley. A large stainless steel sink, a very ingenious design that they have utilized now is this Eno four burner stove that has four different burners that are laid out in such a way that you can actually put four pots on them. If you've ever tried cooking on a Sailcat, you know you can't fit more than three items on it typically. Of course, there's a microwave oven and a regular oven down below. Moving forward and port is the nav station. It's a lovely leather covered desk that you could use as a workstation, but also a navigation station. They have the iPad mirrored to the BNG electronics so they can see all vital information from in here if you're navigating through a squall, etc. But it also has vital components that you're going to need on a boat like this. It has an information system that you can get levels for your tankage, your electricity, your batteries, your fuel, etc. Fusion stereo, air conditioner control, iPad which mirrors the BNG electronics, and then below is the control for the water maker. There's a large LG TV with an ingenious mount that allows it to be viewed not only from the salon, but to pivot outside so you can view it from the cockpit. All right, so leaving the salon, we go down the steps to the port side, which is also considered the guest side. In the forward portion, you can see here that they have converted it into a very organized storage area. The organized bins can easily be removed, the mattress added, and it is back to use as a guest cabin. This forward stateroom is similar in size to the aft stateroom, which we'll move to now. Moving now towards the rear stateroom on the port side, it's a lovely queen size berth with room to walk around both sides, abundant storage, multiple hatches that let in light and air for good ventilation. In summary, the port side has two queen size berths, each with their own ensuite head and shower. Moving now to the starboard side, which is the owner's side. As we move aft on the starboard hull, you will see the large queen size bed with abundant room on either side to move around. There is storage along the outboard side with a large comfortable settee. As we move forward, we pass the separate water closet, continuing to move back into the main part of the head, which has a stall shower, vanity, as well as a combination washer dryer. On behalf of myself, Laura, and the rest of the crew at Catamaran Central, thank you so much for coming out sailing with us today. If you have any questions on this boat, I'll have all of the specs, pricing, and details down below. You can also leave us a comment, and we cannot wait to get out sailing with you all in the next one.